Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 2, lesson 5, compare and order real numbers. After this lesson, you need to be able to use rational approximations to compare and order real numbers, including irrational numbers. Let's learn. Compare and order real numbers. You can compare and order real numbers by writing them in the same form. One way to do this is to use or approximate the decimal expansion of each number to compare or order a set of numbers. So if we wanted to compare the following numbers and order them, 18 fifths, pi, and the square root of 11, the first thing we would want to do is write them in their decimal notation. So 18 fifths, 18 divided by 5 is 3.6. We could use long division to figure that out. Pi is approximately 3.14. And the square root of 11 is about 3.32. And we could use our strategies from previous lessons to figure out what the square root of 11 was. Now that we have our decimal approximations for each of these, we can compare them, meaning figuring out which one's greater than others, and put them in order. So let's compare these. Notice here, now we put them in order from least to greatest. So that way we can say one number is bigger than the other, and then another number is bigger than both of them. So here, 3.14 was the smallest, 3.32 was larger than that, and then 3.6 was larger than 3.2 and 3.14. Now, those are not the numbers that we originally used, so when we're doing this, we need to replace it back with our original numbers. So 3.14 was pi, 3.32 was the square root of 11, and 3.6 was 18 fifths. Once we've done that, our symbols should be the same. So pi was less than the square root of 11, which is less than 18 fifths. Now, if we want to show where they're located on the number line, we can graph them. So pi was at 3.14, which is approximately there. I just estimated to the best I could. Square root of 11 was at 3.32, so just past 3.3, and then 18 fifths is exactly 3.6, so we would put it there. Overall, if we're putting those numbers in order from least to greatest, 3.14 was the smallest, so pi was the smallest, then the square root of 11, then 18 fifths. Example 1. Compare real numbers. Which symbol, less than, greater than, or equals, would complete the statement square root of 8, something, 2 and 2 thirds, to make a true statement? Then graph the numbers on a number line. So first part A, let's compare the numbers. We're going to do this by approximating their decimal. So the square root of 8 is about 2.8. If we need to go more decimal places, we could later. For now, let's just say 2.8. 2 and 2 thirds is 2.6 repeating. Now, 8 and 6 in the tenths place there, those are different enough for me to be able to compare. If, for example, we had the mixed number 2 and 4 fifths, which is exactly equal to 2.8, then we would need to go farther with this 2.8 approximation so we can know if it's actually larger or if that was rounded up. Anyway, they're different. So since 2.8 is greater than 2.6 repeating, we can say the square root of 8 is then greater than 2 and 2 thirds. Remember, those are your original numbers, so we need to use those when we're comparing, not their decimal approximations. Part B, graph the numbers on the number line. So the square root of 8 was at about 2.8. Maybe it's a little bit further to the right. And 2 and 2 thirds, or 2.6 repeating, would be just over halfway between 2.6 and 2.7. Take time to pause and reflect. When you first saw the last example, what was your reaction? Did you think you could solve the problem? Did what you already know help you to solve the problem at all? Pause the video and write down your thoughts. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and choose the best answer. Then, which number line shows the correct placements of the two numbers? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. In part A, you should have said those are equal. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. And then the square root of 6.25, this is really close to that perfect square of 625. The square root of 625 is 25. 25 times 25 is 625. This had two decimal places, so we can do that perfect square, so we would put it in, so we have 2.5 times 2.5. So they are equal. Which one's going to show the correct placement? Then that must be B. If both of them are equal, they're showing the dot in the same place, and that dot should be at 2.5. Example 2. Compare real numbers. Which symbol, less than, greater than, or equal, would complete the statement negative square root of 6 something negative pi over 2 to make a true statement? Then graph the numbers on the number line. So again, part A, compare the numbers. We're going to continue to approximate using decimals. So the square root of 6 is about 2.4, and then it was negative, so negative 2.4. Negative pi over 2, to figure that out, we can approximate pi as 
divided that by 2 is 1.57, and it was negative, so negative 1.57. If we're comparing these, negative 2.4 is less, it's further negative than negative 1.57. So we would use the less than symbol, saying that the negative square root of 6 is less than negative pi over 2. Now, graphing them on the number line, the negative square root of 6, we approximated that at negative 2.4, which is over here. So negative square root of 6 would be about negative 2.4. If you approximate it to further decimal places, it's actually a little bit further to the left somewhere over in this area. But since we just estimated to the nearest tenth, then we can plot it to the nearest tenth. Negative pi over 2, which was negative 1.57, we would plot that here. Remember, when we're plotting with negative numbers, larger negatives tend to go more to the left. So be careful on plotting that one. If you were thinking maybe it should be over here, remember, that's getting closer to 1.4. That's negative rather than 1.6. And this is closer to 1.6 than 1.5. So be careful when you're plotting your negative numbers. Take time to pause and reflect again. How does graphing numbers on a number line help you to know whether to use the less than, greater than, or equal sign when comparing them? Pause the video and write down your thoughts. Check your understanding. Which symbol would you use to make a true statement? Then choose the correct placement of the two numbers. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have said that negative square root of 5 is less than negative 210%. And then if we're looking for the correct placement here, so first I'm going to change my percent to a decimal. 210% would be the same as 2.1, and it's negative, so negative 2.1. I can check right away. I see negative 2.1. This one's not at 2.1, so it could be this one. This one's not at 2.1. This one, so I'm left with either A or D. Which one has a better approximation of the square root of 5? If I find the square root of 5, I end up with 2.2. Now, this one's saying 2.2, but a little bit closer than to 2.3. This one's saying exactly on 2.2. So which one is it? If we were to go out more decimal places for the square root of 5, it ends up being 2.23. So D is actually your better graph for these two things. If you picked A, thinking on 2.2 and you use negative 2.2 to estimate the square root of 5, that's okay, you're thinking on the right track. Example 3, order real numbers. Order the set, square root of 30, 6, 5 and 4 fifths, and 5.36 repeating from least to greatest. Then graph the set on the number line. So first, let's order them. Again, to do this, we need to put them all in the same form. Let's use decimals. So the square root of 30 is about 5.5, and we can go further if we need to. 6 is just 6.00, so we don't really need to do anything. We can add the zeros to make it into a decimal. 5 and 4 fifths is 5.8. And then 5.36 repeating is already a decimal. We can round off even more to 5.37 or 5.36. They're going to be approximately in the same place on a number line anyway. So let's put them in order from least to greatest. So I'm looking here, 5.3 would be my lowest, 5.37. Then my next lowest would be 5.5. And 5.8 would be next. And then my largest is 6. Replacing them back with their original numbers, 5.37 originally was 5.36 repeating, 5.5 we got from the square root of 30, 5.8 was 5 and 4 fifths, and then 6 was 6. Now, part B, let's graph our numbers on the number line. When we get to the square root of 30 and 5.36, since these numbers are actually between these values on the number line, we'll just approximate where they go. So square root of 30, if I had estimated out to the hundredths rather than the tenths, I would see that it's between 5.5 and 5.6. If you put on 5.5, you're on the right track. 6 would go at 6. 5 and 4 fifths we said was 5.8. And then 5.36 is going to be down here between 5.3 and 5.4. Take time to pause and reflect. How are comparing real numbers and ordering real numbers related to each other? Pause the video and write down your thoughts. Check your understanding. Order the given set of numbers from least to greatest. Then choose the number line that best shows the correct placement of the numbers. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. So first, which is showing the correct order? That would be A, 1.35 pi over 2, as we saw in a previous, is the same as 1.57. 160% is 1.6. And then the square root of 3, if we estimate that out, is about 1.7 or 1.73 if we go farther. So that one shows the numbers in the correct order. 
Now, if we're choosing which one shows the correct placement on the number line, 1.355 should be slightly past 1.35. Pi over 2 should be at 1.57, so somewhere in this area right here. 160% is it should be at 1.6, so that doesn't help us. And then 1.73 was the approximation for the square root of 3. So which one is showing in the correct spot? That is A. There, the 1.35 repeating should be slightly farther than 1.35, and the square root of 3 should be slightly farther than 1.7. Example 4. Use real numbers. On Wednesday, there's an 83 and 1 third percent chance of rain. On Thursday, it's a 9 tenths chance. And on Friday, there's a 6 out of 7 chance that it will rain. On which day is there the greatest chance of rain? So just like we've been doing, first we need to put them into the same format. We'll put them as decimal approximations. And then we'll just round to the nearest hundredth here, since we're not really dealing with any square roots. These are a little bit easier to do that with. So 83 and one third percent is about 0 0.83. 9 tenths is 0 0.90. And 6 out of 7, if we were to divide 6 by 7, we would get 0 0.86. We can see there are two numbers here that have the 8 in the tenths place, which is why it was important to move on to the hundredths when we were rounding, just so we could break those ties. Next, let's order them so we can decide which one has the greatest chance of rain. So if we put them in order, 9 tenths was greatest, then 6 sevenths was in the middle, and 83 and 1 third was the lowest chance. So which day does it have the greatest chance of rain? It was that 9 tenths day, which was Thursday. On Thursday, it was a 9 tenths chance. So the greatest chance is Thursday. Check your understanding, look through the table, and decide which player has the greatest on-base statistic. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said player 2. So let's convert these all to decimals. So for player 3, we have 0 0.725. So pretty much 0 0.72. We can use that 5 if we need it. 15 out of 21. So let's divide 15 by 21 and see what we come up with. 21 goes into 15 0 times. How many times does 21 go into 150? I'm going to say 7 times. 7 times 21 should be 147 with 3. How many times does 21 go into 30? Just one time. And I would have 9 left over. From there, I can stop. I already can see that 0.71 is less than 0.72. What about 14 out of 19? So 14 divided by 19. 19 goes into 14 zero times. There's my decimal. 19 goes into 140 seven times. And then 7 times 19 is 133. So 7 left. Bring down a 0. 19 is going to go into 70 three times. Already in my hundredth place, I know that 7.3 is bigger than 7.2 and is bigger than 7.1. So here's a good instance where we had to go farther than just one decimal place so we can know that they're not actually tied, that one is more than the other. So 7.3, that was the highest. Which one does that for? 14 out of 19. Player 2 had the best statistic. 